Hi everyone, we're into week six and it's music week this week and the contestants had to make a parka jacket in the pattern challenge, um, a country and western outfit in the transformation and then uh, it was uh, bringing Bowie to the catwalk, catwalk? catwalk uh, in the motor measure. It's going to be a long day. Uh, so the pattern challenge was to make a parka jacket and they had four and a half hours. Now this was a big ask. They are really pushing them now. Um, there were a few places where they could come unstuck because they had a very complex uh, zip uh, with a placket. Um, I think they called it a zip guard um, on the front. Um, there was a hood, there was a popper fastening and there were two cord uh, ties. There was one around the waist so they had to make a casing for that and then there was uh, the one in the hem as well. And the hem was a fishtail hem. So they had to deal with that too. Um, <clears throat> so there were there were lots of places where they could come unstuck. Really, a lot of them had difficulty with the uh, zip and placket combination, um, and Manny <laughs> managed to tell half the uh, contestants to do it incorrectly, so they had to unpick it. Um, also, there was uh, fabrics played a bit of a, a role in this as well. Uh, Jill's fabric in particular was uh, looked great, but actually to sew was really tricky because I think it was kind of rubbery or slightly shiny and slippery on the other on one side um, so that made it a real pig to sew. Um, she did use a walking foot which is one of these chappies. Uh, you just clip it onto your machine and it just uh, helps the fabric go through your machine a bit slower. Um, don't ask me how it works uh, technically but um, it works. <laughs> anyway Jill used one of those um, we've also got in stock this yeah, so they're £26 and they uh, fit most machines. So if you're a low shank, normal, just a normal sewing machine, it will fit your machine. We've also got in the magnetic uh, wristband pin cushions, which a lot of them are using. We've also got um, just normal pin cushions on a wristband, um, as well as just normal pin cushions. You don't have to have those. So, um, yeah. So Jill's, Jill's camouflage fabric was quite tricky to work with. Um, Annie and Brogan used a similar fabric, that kind of olivey green classic uh, Parker fabric. And I just so happened to have just got some in. Um, it's this one. It's from Barber. So it's an ex-Barber. It's that classic Barber green, that kind of olivey green, I guess. It's waterproof. It is um, it's cotton, 70% cotton, 30% nylon. Um, and it is nine pounds a meter it's 150 centimeters wide we also of course have the red cord or lots of different color cord um to use with it um i particularly like annie's combination of the red cord with the green which is very similar to marnie's uh, combination in the sports jacket challenge a, a few weeks ago she used red and green um so that was those two angela used a purple canvas um which was of her era I guess <laughs> that sounds really rude but she's my age so um uh she she should have stuck to her guns about the zip she overheard the Manny conversation about the zip and changed what she did and then she had to unpick it all and so she ran out of time and her zip was really messy so that's what um put her down in the rankings Christian quietly got on with it I really liked his fabric choice it was that kind of denim -y look fabric in a, a just a off-white color and and the reverse of it was a pale gray so he cleverly reversed the pockets so you had these two big pockets um uh, on the front <coughs> excuse me in the, in the contrast gray that was another thing they had to do they had to line up the top of the pockets and that was quite a tricky thing to do um Manny did the red spot fabric um yeah she had a few raw edges and the placket wasn't very um uh, very well done uh, Brogan's um, olive coloured one, similar to the the Barber fabric, um, hers is very well sewn. And then Deborah did the royal blue canvas and she came a bit unstuck on the placket as well. So that was those. Uh, then they had to do the transformation challenge, which was to take um, a load of denim and what looked like a load of check shirts and turn them into a, um, a stage outfit for a country and western star. Now they didn't say they were a guitarist, Esme, 
So I think you're a bit unfair on the Man U's long sleeve jacket here, saying the guitarist couldn't wear it. Because I don't think a guitarist could have worn any of those costumes, to be honest. And um, Brogan's one, it would have fallen out. I certainly would have done anyway. Um, right, so transformation challenge. They had lots of fringing. Oh, that's just duck gone on my tea. Lots of fringing. Um, <coughs> which is quite fun. And I noticed a lot of them used uh, motifs and stickers to iron on. I mean, this is just a very small selection of what we've got in stock. We've got quite a few motifs. Um, which are really handy for jazzing up an outfit or covering holes or bleach marks. We get <laughs> people asking to cover quite a lot. Uh, uh, so, yeah, Jill's halter neck top with the strategically placed stars uh, came first and Brogan's side boob um, check top came second, I think. So at the end of that round, um, Brogan and Christian were in first and second. Then there was Deborah and Jill, Manny and Annie, and then Angela was at the bottom. So we went into Made to Measure, which is bringing Bowie to the catwalk. Catwalk, <laughs> I've done it again. <laughs> uh, in five and a half hours, they had to make um, their outfits. So I've struggled to find patterns uh, for this, but I have found a few and a few that you could maybe pattern hack to get some of the features. Um, Okay, so Annie's, uh, which was fantastic. It was that kind of um, metallic blue uh, double-breasted blazer dress. And this is the pattern that she used. It's McCall's 7997. It was the one with the asymmetric hem down the bottom here. It goes, uh, it goes in up to size 22, so from a size 8, I think, possibly a 6, up to a size 22. I think this has come up before on Sewing Bee, this pattern seems to come up regularly. But um, she definitely used that one. She had, this has got, I don't know if you can see the line drawings on the back there, but it's got two uh, darts at the at the waist and bust in the, in the middle, at the front and at the back, which is um, sort of a defining feature of that. Um, so she would have used shoulder pads. Dun, dun, dun. And she also um, self-covered buttons she had on the front. So these come in lots of different sizes. This is just a couple of sizes. They're relatively simple to use. You cut your circular fabric, put it over the button, and then clip the back on. There is a little tool to make you do it easier, but you can do it without the tool. It's been a while since I've done them. but um, And her, her dress fitted really nicely as well. Um, Jill, she did the blue sequin um, it was a halter neck lapel dress with a, uh, a low back. I couldn't find a pattern for anything like this, uh, I'm afraid. But the fabric, that was a really tricky fabric to sew with all those sequins because sequins are a nightmare because your needle hits them, you can break your needle, the sequins fly off. It makes your, se make your seam go a bit wobbly because there's sequins in the way. Um, so she got she did really well actually and the zip at the back her concealed zip at the back and where the, the back leveled off was really really neat um unfortunately it was a little bit big and she was going to take it in then she decided not to and she could have done with taking it in just a little bit more um so deborah did the ashes to ashes look um with a two-piece trouser suit with the ostrich feathers i thought it was quite dramatic it's actually wearable <laughs> I think um, so I found a couple of they were the classic sort of cigar straight cut trouser um, so I found a few patterns um, that might be suitable for that so McCall's 7937 you get a little top with that as well you can either do the the, the uh, straight leg here or put little things have got little frills on the bottom that may be where she got the idea of the ostrich feathers I don't know um, but she she sewed one of her sleeves inside out so she had two left sleeves so she had to unpick it and redo it and of course she'd overlocked it so she had to cut it so the right sleeve was a little bit smaller than the left sleeve um right there's another trouser pattern uh 7690 these all go up to size 22 and then this one as well quite a straight uh cut trouser there which is 6930 and you get little shorts in that too um her top was quite a basic top quite 
semi-fitted, looked like I had a little peplum. I couldn't find anything, I'm afraid, um, that uh, was anything like that. Um, also, fabric-wise, I don't really have a lot um, sort of dramatic fabrics, um, like the kind of thing that they used. But hey, uh, right, next on my list is, oh, Manny did the oversized blazer in that tiger fabric. Um, actually, we have got the velvet with the tigers and zebras and lions on it, which might look quite cool with that. Um, I didn't bring it down with me. Silly me. Um, and then a tulle skirt. So we had, we've got tulle, which all dress net, um, which is quite a good structure. Jill had this on her dress as well, and you can really scrunch it up and get good texture with it. We've got this in loads of different colours. It's um, it's quite wide, 150 centimetres wide, and it's only 250 metres, so you can do loads with it. Um, you can cut it into strips, you can make tutus out of it, uh, no sew tutus, all kinds of things. Uh, right, Man Yi, she had the little, um, cute little dress um, in the blue, sort of with foil flowers on it, look, big foil flowers, it was quite funky fabric. And one of the features was these big puff sleeves, so pleated, the, the sleeves are pleated. Um, I couldn't find anything like her dress, but I did find a pattern with really similar sleeves. Um, so you might be able to pattern hack those sleeves. You might not be able to see, but on this picture, these sleeves are actually pleated uh, into position, and that is 8036. Again, these go up to size 22. Um, and this one as well, this has got quite big sleeves with pleats in it. Um, that's for calls 7968. Um, yeah, they didn't like, well, they, they liked the top half of her dress, but the bottom half they said was a bit too too plain and simple. Um, Christians did a catsuit, a one-legged, one-armed catsuit, um, which fitted very snugly. Um, I don't think it was over snug, because from the front it looked fine. It wasn't giving a camel toe or anything. Um, but it was really well sewn because it had these curved panel sections in the sides here and that there wasn't any puckering that was all really smooth um, and also only had one sleeve so it was always going to be a bit lopsided on the neck but it it kind of sat okay um, and then he had this big dramatic cape um, as well which was lined um, so I don't have I don't stock any like quiz I'm afraid um, so cape wise I mean there's quite a few in the fancy dress um, section 7886 is like the biggest, fullest cape I could find, but there are quite a few others. I didn't wake them all out. Cat suit wise, there are quite a few <laughs> in the um, uh, fancy dress section. So first up, we're feeling a bit saucy. Seven two one seven. Um, Eight oh seven three is a slightly looser fit. Uh, Seven two six nine. Okay, and I forgot to mention on Deborah's. Uh, no, not Deborah's. Whose was it? Oh no, I haven't got to it yet. That's why. <laughs> it was Angela's coat. Um, Angela's coat. I don't think they like the fabric that she chose because she said she chose it just because she liked it. It was a needle cord, and then she paired it with black velvet insets. It was it was a really clever sew, um, and the second coat that she was going to have to make um because of course they did one in the uh, pattern challenge as well it was just kind of a steampunk coat uh, kind of thing they wear in the, the film labyrinth um that i think they did actually show it was a simplicity pattern they did and i forgot to make a note of the number but we don't stop simplicity so a similar kind of thing but it's not not really because it hasn't got the inserts but this kind of shape Eight one two three. And you can see at the back, it's really really full at the back. It's a real period coat. This, um, and she used buttons to embellish her coat and braiding as well. Um, and she didn't actually use this button. Um, I saw it on there. So you see those. But um, yeah, we could. We got. I picked out some other big sort of embellishing style buttons. So at the end of the day, um, after that round, um, Angela was still in last place. So I think the right person went home this time. <laughs> um, so next week is lingerie and sleepwear. So it looks like they're going to have to make a 
pair of pants or knickers, ladies' knickers, um, which is something I'm going to do. Um, I think there's a local course <laughs> and uh, I'm going to go and, and do it because I've never done anything like that. And then sleepwear looks like they're going to be making some pyjamas. So that's it for me and I'll see you very soon. Bye.